سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ وعلیکم السلام و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Welcome dear listeners to uh, Quranic Reflections here on Inspire FM and uh, today uh, with myself um, uh, Muhammad Saeed with uh, Sheikh Nuruddin. Um, Sheikh, uh, we were discussing before the start of the program um, you know, various aspects of um, what's been happening over the past uh, few weeks. So we've had a lot has been said um, about uh, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I thought it would be an idea um, Um, to discuss um, more about um, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, mm. you know, about his, uh, about what his teachings are, what his character is. So in that regard, Sheikh, um, what would you consider uh, to be some of the most important aspects of his character that we can learn from? Uh, and what does the deen uh, say? Uh, and what does the Quran and Hadith say about this, inshallah? Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله first of all we'll begin with a verse of the Quran this is from surah al-qalam um, verse number 4 wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears an oath wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim Oh, sorry, not swears an oath, but emphasizes a great deal. Inna in Arabic language is um, a means of emphasizing something, mm -hmm. as is the la on la ala. Okay, so a great deal of emphasis in this verse of the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in it, it translate translates as, And indeed, verily, you are of a great character. Or vast character. The word Alvim can be translated as great. It can also be translated as vast. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said regarding mm -hmm. uh, one of the verses that speaks about the Prophet sallallahu And here in particular speaks about the akhlaq of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is clear testimony of the Holy Quran about the the perfect nature of the akhlaq of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad. Which is... Inevitable and uh, obviously makes sense the fact that we are uh, enc not encouraged but obliged rather to follow the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fact that he is going to have perfection in all aspects of his devotion to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala goes without saying. Mm. Okay, but the particular manner in which Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned it here is important. You know, so much emphasis in the in the holy verse of the Quran, and some of the ulama they even said the word in Arabic Allah wa inna kala Allah khuluqin azim. Allah um, is used in Arabic language for Yani something which is above another. Okay. Mm. So some even they went further. They said the Prophet ﷺ is not upon a, a vast character or great character. The Prophet ﷺ is actually even above that. Mm. ﷺ, using the wording, the Arabic language here for this particular point that they draw upon. So in this general statement regarding the akhlaq of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, if we were to go into... Some more specifics. Mm. And we have a famous hadith uh, by Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Anas ibn Malik was a Sahabi that when the Prophet وسلم, entered into Medina Sharif uh, to reside in Medina Sharif, Anas ibn Malik was roughly 10 years old. Mm. And his mother, radiallahu ta'ala anha, Umm Sulaim, she um, wanted him to have the best tarbiyah, the best teaching, the best form of upbringing and really, you know, become a, a great person. So she seems quite evident from her actions. She felt that the best way of doing this is to give him maximum company mm. with the Prophet So what she done when the Prophet migrated to Medina Sharif, she came to the Prophet with Anas ibn Malik and Huma, her son, and said to the Prophet O oh Messenger of Allah, please accept my son as a khadim, as a servant for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the Prophet وسلم, doesn't need servants. Mm -hmm. 
No. But this is part of the generosity of the Prophet ﷺ, as we have a general principle that, I don't know if this is from hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, but oft quoted uh, that the one accepting the gift is more generous than the one giving the gift. Okay. And we find this regularly. The general sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ was to accept gifts. There were some exceptions where you know, the Prophet ﷺ maybe felt that it's uh, burdensome on the person giving it, they're giving too much or what have you. So the Prophet ﷺ would generally accept. So this, the Prophet ﷺ accepted this from Umm Sulaim, even though, you know, no doubt, as uh, one may imagine, that the, the benefit was entirely one way. The benefit was for Umm Sulaim radiallahu ta'ala anha, who now had far more access to the Prophet sallallahu yeah, alaihi wasallam. When I teach Sirah, I often mention that this woman, she was a blessed woman, but a very in, and also a very intelligent woman radiallahu ta'ala anha. She may have thought to herself, look, the Prophet's coming to reside in Medina, and the males are going to get a lot of contact, a lot of time with him, and you know, be able to speak to him regularly, see him regularly. Females probably. Not so much. Mm. So by this action, she produced an inroad mm. to uh, uh, an access to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So whenever she wanted, she could go to the Messenger of Allah and say, "Oh, Messenger of Allah, how is Anas doing? Is he serving well? Is he is he listening to what you're telling him? Is he this? Is he that?" You know, every so often she can just come into the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam under the pretext that. I've just come to find out about Anas. Mm. <laughs> now, but as for Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, yani, as I said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wasn't one, you know, that would uh, um, have servants around or have slaves around, even though that was prevalent in that mm. time. And even though, yeah. um, especially political leaders, they would have a great deal of this. Yes. Okay? Mm. Especially the kings and the emperors and even local um Tribal leaders, they would have this, but the Prophet ﷺ never so, done so. this. Okay, mm. but uh, Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, nevertheless, was allowed to kind of hang around, if you mm. like, in the house of the Prophet oh, so. Anyway, in this hadith, this is in Bukhari and in Muslim. The wording sl uh, is slightly different between the two. This wording here is uh, from Bukhari, where Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik uh, said, "Khadamtu uh, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashri sinin." فما قال لي أف ولم ولا لما صنعت ولا إلا صنعت لما صنعت عفوا now which translates as the Prophet I served the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم for ten years and in that period he never once said to me أف we spoke about this last mm -hmm. week. We spoke about how uff in the Arab culture was, you know, the re really the least kind of annoyance mm -hmm. um, you could show, uh, express at somebody's mm -hmm. action or behavior. Yeah. And he says, in those 10 years, the Prophet ﷺ never ever even said this to me. Mm -hmm. And this gives yeah. us some insight into the behavior or the character of the Prophet mm -hmm. ﷺ. Okay? And uh, uh, the Prophet uh, he, he went on to say, and he never sa said to me, which means why did you do such and such mm. and he never said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if if only you would do such and such mm. and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know, the summary of it the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never rebuked him he never you know, pushed him a great deal sallallahu mm. alayhi wa sallam Muhammad, and was just really easy going with him mm. okay, of a really gentle easy going disposition so this is one of the things we can say quite clearly about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not just from this hadith mm. from many many hadith this was part of the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mm. he used to in his interaction with people sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was really easy going really relaxed mm. would try to make things easy for people mm. would uh, you know not a place burden on anybody and such things. So this was part of the akhlaq of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad. I mean that's that that's really amazing that somebody who lived with the Prophet peace be upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the the least derogatory term where he was never heard. Never heard. I mean, uh, how often do we probably, you know, spend time with uh, our some friends in or, or uh, mm. on occasions with our family, yeah. and um, you know, maybe you know, they're at school or work, and then come home at the end, and you know, it's like, oh, don't talk to me, oh, go away, yeah. <laughs> oh, the, you know, it's uh, it's it's quite telling, isn't it, that exactly. um, uh, that somebody who is of that, but that, but that's also. Um, 
demonstrative of of patience, which I'm sure you're going to come on, mm. come on to anyway, because I'm sure there must have been there could have been things that probably oh you know um, uh, tested or it probably uh, it could have had a right to say something, but absolutely. probably didn't. Absolutely, all of the time, the Prophet sallallahu would do this, and he he would be well in his rights to rebuke somebody. Mm. Even possibly to punish somebody, mm. but he wouldn't do so. Sallallahu so alaihi wasallam. When it came to his own rights, mm. he would always give them up. Mm. And for ex- uh, an, uh, an example, I often give in yeah. a hadith. It mentions once a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and, and tugged at his garment. Mm. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam tugged at the Prophet's garment. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, he tugged with uh, you know such strength that it left a mark on the blessed body of the Prophet Sallallahu like a burn mark mm. and he said to the he abused the Prophet and his entire family he said innakum bani abdul muttalib qawmun mutal which means you the children or the family of Abdul Muttalib. So this is not only including the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alone, mm-hmm. you know, his entire family. Abdul Muttalib is his grandfather. Mm-hmm. So you know, yes. includes his uncles, his father, everybody, mm-hmm. his entire family and call him Muttal. Muttal is, you know, we may ro- loosely translate it as miserly. Okay. Mm-hmm. What it specifically means is um, a person who owes another money or has a debt mm-hmm. um, and has the ability to uh, repay that debt but doesn't do so. Mm-hmm. And it's a form of miserliness. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Arabs, you know, they, uh, this was amongst the worst insult for Arabs. Uh, even be- before the Islamic period, yani, really? to be called miserly was really, really harsh for an Arab to take. Right. Very difficult right. to take. This is why, mm. even before the Islamic uh, period, they mm. used to spend a lot of money, time, effort in trying mm. to present themselves as being generous. They would mm. spend vast sums of money, you know, to feed people. Not ne- unfortunately, not necessarily the poor. Right. <laughs> but oh, right. <laughs> feed mm. feed people. Usually, the rich, the yeah. wealthy, and to uh, gain favor and to gain favor, and mm. also to present themselves as uh, uh, generous. I see now. Okay. The uh, generosity was a virtue even in their mm. pre-Islamic culture. Not necessarily for the right intentions. Not, no, that's the problem. It wasn't mm. with the right intentions. Mm. And the opposite, yeah. miserliness, was really seen as okay. uh, something really base, right. really lowly. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he said this to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the <coughs> Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would have been well within his rights mm. to rebuke him. Mm. Okay, well within his rights to. Um, Say to him uh, was something similar, yeah. to abuse mm-hmm. him in a similar mm-hmm. manner. Mm-hmm. But we know our messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, never ever done this. No. He never reciprocated any abuse with abuse, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad, uh, Sayyidina Umar was next to the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, mm-hmm. who was greatly angered by this, and he asked the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, permission to punish him. And the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, and this is uh, part of not only patience but intense humility of the messenger of Allah mm. mm. he turned to say no Omar he didn't only say no don't punish him he didn't only say leave him alone mm. he said something وسلم, yeah, much more profound and this was his nature mm. he said to him oh Omar we were in need of better than this as for me you should advise me to pay my debts on time and as for him you should advise him to ask in a better manner. Mm. This was the response of the Prophet Sallallahu We should point out though, mm. this person, as the hadith continues, he pointed out, he mentioned himself that the money the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu had borrowed from him, its appointed time of repayment hadn't arrived yet. He'd done oh, this on purpose right. to test the patience of the Prophet. He was a non-Muslim. Mm. And after he saw the patience of the Prophet Sallallahu so, so. he became Muslim. Mm. So it was. So there was a wisdom in it. There was a wisdom in it. And it, it he he wasn't doing it. Yeah, it was inappropriate, no doubt. But he wasn't mm. doing it out of malice, if you like, or out mm. of hatred. Mm. He was doing it to test a sign of prophecy, of mm. prophethood. Oh, see. You see. Okay. So he he mentioned, as far as I know, he was a Jewish person. He said, yeah. in our scriptures, we had a number of signs, and I'd I seen see. all of them in you. Mm. The one I hadn't seen is. Um, he personally may have not may not have seen it. No. Everybody else saw it all the time. But he said the one I hadn't seen is it said in our scripture that the more ignorance you show him, the more patience 
he he treats you with, mm. and he wanted to try that. Right. So patience, no doubt, intense mm. humility. The Prophet ﷺ had great modesty, and these are just some mm. of the characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ yes. encouraged yeah. the Ummah mm. to um, you know to really work on their character. Mm. You see, mm. it's not it's not the case that you know you're you've kind of got a natural disposition to behaving a certain manner or mm. displaying a certain type of character and then oh. you're just happy with it and you just suffice with that. Yeah. Rather we have so many hadith of the Prophet so, where so. the Prophet so. encourages good character. Mm. Encourages one to try to better their character, to mm. try to perfect their character. Yeah, yeah. Any one hadith I've mentioned a number of times, yeah. I'll quickly repeat that, but I want to mention some other hadith also. Yeah. A hadith I've mentioned a number of times on these sessions. <laughs> I was only sent to perfect good character. Now, this hadith is in Hakim, Mustadrak of Hakim, who said it's Sahih, and Imam Thahabi agreed with him. Wallahu a'lam. Now, we have a, a hadith also in Ahmad, the Muslim of Imam Ahmad, uh, which is a Sahih hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا وخياركم خياركم لنسائكم سبحان الله. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <laughs> the most perfect of believers in their faith are those who are best in character. It was a statement of the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ made a measure of iman, character. Right. You see, so this is if you want to uh, try to estimate how good a believer you are or yeah. how good a Muslim or Mu'min you are, yeah. look at your character. Mm. And if it's really defective and has a lot of shortcomings, which, to be honest with you, if we're o honest with ourselves, mm. a lot of us will find yes. this. Yes. Okay, There's somebody who finds no flaws <laughs> within himself or herself, or no, you know, lack, uh, lacking with regards to their character, is um, really quite unfortunate, mm. Mm. because perfection. Human perfection is for the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're, we're yeah. all going to have our flaws. Yes. And the fact that we can't, sometimes we don't, we fail to identify our flaws mm. is um, a big problem. Mm. Mm. And, uh, you know, really, uh, as some of the ulama put it, a lack of tawfiq. And this person doesn't have, uh, he should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray for facilitation. Mm. Because this person is really not facilitated with regards to no. bettering oneself. So this is important. So first yes. of all, the Prophet sallallahu spoke about this is, you know, this is a measure. You know, the most perfect in faith is the, most, uh, is the best in character. Mm. But then right away in this narration, in Ahmed, yes. uh, the Prophet sallallahu went on to say, وَخِيَارُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ لِنِسَائِكُمْ and the best of you are the best of you to their women. Mm. Okay. This may mean wives yes. primarily, but yes. it can mean others, you know, yes. female relatives. Yes. But if we if we look at the meaning of wives again, you know, Salallahu, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is wisdom. You see, every word that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions uh, has great wisdom in it, mm. and this is why it's you know. Uh, sometimes we hear fabricated hadith or what have you, or extremely weak hadith attributed yeah. to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not permitted. No. The, 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 the speech of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is unique. Yes. See, after the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran, this is the highest yeah. form we have. So it's unique. So everything, it has its wisdom. So here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, immediately after speaking about character and having better character means more faith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, mentioned, the best of you are the best of you to their women mm. because you know a lot of people yes um, their character with their spouses maybe mm. husband to wife and maybe vice versa also yeah. wife to husband mm. their character with the spouses or with one spouse is often the worst you know mm. fairly easy to demonstrate good character um, or put on a show if you like for mm. strangers mm. or mm you know, colleagues or associates or what have you, mm. but somebody who with whom you spend the majority of your life, mm. it's more difficult. Mm. And this yeah, is why the Prophet yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed it out there. Yeah. When you're speaking about akhlaq, yeah. this is one good place to measure mm. your true character. Mm. No. 
Yeah, yeah, I think we that absolutely. I think we we covered s- a, a, yeah. a small part of that previously when yeah. we were talking about um, uh, a few programs ago now about about marriage. Yes, and yes. Uh, and it's absolutely the case where we find sometimes relatives are very poor in character with with one another. Whereas in fact, I think you made the point <coughs> it should be. It shouldn't be quite the reverse, but you should be, it should be consistent. It should, in fact, probably show more love and reverence to those who are who are closer to you. Absolutely, uh, yes. Uh, we uh, should have good character mm. with everybody, yeah. but then a special mm. effort is with, made with those who are mm. even closer to yeah. one. Because that if you look, if one spouse has given up quite a lot in some cases, you know, to, to be part of this union, and so they should be accorded even greater um, uh, love and affection and consideration rather yeah. than um, see you know uh, see an experience a poorer representation of one's of, of oneself yeah. um, but going back on what you said previously I didn't want to interrupt you because it mm-hmm. was it was amazing that um, but we should take a, a lot from that of course we should take a, uh, everything yeah, from what, everything that you said inshallah uh, but I think the most telling thing that happened um, in the story that uh, that you narrated was that what the uh, the, the person did to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, and he responded and replied in a way that wasn't arrogant at all. That wasn't saying, no. "Well, who do you think you are? Do you know yeah. who I am?" Which because have been would that, have been that, well that, in that, his yeah, rights absolutely. to say and, so. Uh, well, mm-hmm. every, that happens all the time. Yeah, like you know, we're crossing the road, yeah. and um, and a car comes along, and you know, maybe the driver thinks, "Oh, who do you think you are?" Yeah, and maybe the pedestrian thinks, "Oh, well, who <laughs> do you think you are?" And yes. you know, instead of saying, "Oh, you know," apologetically saying, well, and it happens all of the time. Yeah. Um, and I'll share with a personal experience. I was in the supermarket um, some weeks ago, and somebody came up to me and said, uh, oh, get me that on yeah. the top shelf. Yeah. And I gave it to them, and they just walked away. Yeah. And um, I walked back, and I thought, what, you know, what just happened there? Yeah. No, please. No, thank you. Nothing at all. And it wasn't yeah. a member of staff. It was like another shopper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, and then I thought, I thought, but I went back to the car and I thought, you know, what, what does that, what does that tell me? What, who yeah. do I think I am? Actually, that I somebody needed to say please to me. Mm. You know, perhaps I needed that, and perhaps yeah, that I uh, needed to be reminded that actually, you know what, they treated me like a slave. Yeah, and that in fact, that's what I am. Mm. It's reminding me about who I am. Actually, I'm just God's slave. We're just, I'm just a slave, and that's all I am. Mm. And that's how she treated me. Mm. But then that's that's a reminder for me because actually, we're all here as slaves. And that's the point. I mean, the <laughs> I shouldn't have thought I did that, that thought that feeling that I had that yeah. oh, you know, she should have said please. She should yeah. have said thank you. Yeah. Actually, no. If you've got a slave, you don't say thank you to them. You yeah. don't say please. It's their job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can. Uh, it's again. It's about the the way you look at the perspective mm. you look at it from. Yeah, because you could look at well, common courtesy, please. Yes, <laughs> or you could look at it well, actually. I'm getting rewarded for this, mm. so um, maybe I should be thanking her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, so, I did. I must confess, I didn't think uh, of it that way. Uh, so yeah, but that's, <laughs> but that's the point. Yeah. But again, uh, this uh, any, this is as I said, the believer should take lessons from everything around him, because mm. the believer, you know, the Muslim, the Mu'min believes that everything that's happening in one's life mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overseeing it Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of it mm. so there's a, inshallah there's a lesson to be learned mm. in everything and this in the story that you mentioned that in that incident there's mm. so many lessons I mean one of the things you can derive from that is mm. subhanallah how must it have been for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Like I'm helping her with a can from yeah. the top shelf or yeah. some item from the top shelf, yeah. Yeah. which is assistance nevertheless. Yeah. Uh, but the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yeah. was uh, taking people from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa taala mm. to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and let alone thank you. Yes. They were opposing Muhammad, abusing, murdering his companions, physically, verbally harming him. Mm. But he carried on. Mm. This you know, is a perfect example for, for us of sincerity of intention. Mm. And if the intention had, to be, uh, had been to please the people or mm. what have you, you'd yeah. give up. 
you know, of course. Absolutely. But this is the intention is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just carried on and, mm. you know, rec- kept, uh, you know, in mind. Mm. No doubt, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. But as in, uh, in in one hadith, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to bring them towards paradise and mm. they're rushing headlong towards the fire. Mm. And in another... Uh, Hadith is narrated the Prophet وسلم, said some people will be taken into paradise kicking and screaming. Or <laughs> 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 words to the really? effect. So وسلم, meaning that you know you're trying your best to yeah. take them to guidance, yes. to help them towards the right path or what have you, and they're doing everything they can to rush yeah. in the opposite direction. Uh-huh. But you know, again the, the, the Prophet but Alhamdulillah the fortunate yeah. around the Prophet وسلم, they recognized. Mm. They recognized what it meant yeah. what the Prophet وسلم, had done for them, what he'd given them mm. and what it meant to be in the holy and blessed and sacred company mm. of the Prophet وسلم, and they recognized it and they gave shukr for it and they benefited from it. Absolutely, and it, it's something we should be grateful for each and every day that we wake up and each and every day before we go to sleep and uh, that we are Muslims. Um, and uh, with uh, with that, so we're going to take a uh, short break and uh, we'll be back after these few messages. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, this week's show, and before the break, we were talking about uh, the character um, and behavior and personality of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, um, Shaykh, um, you know, if, if um, one perhaps doesn't have um you know the necessary characteristics and personality and one just did you know fasting and praying you know isn't that sufficient because uh, we see you know somebody doesn't really quite have um you know the the quite the characteristics or is not necessarily a pleasant person but i mean is that necessarily is that would would would, would just praying and and doing all the necessary bits yeah would would is that just considered worship on on its own and would that be sufficient yeah Yeah, as a as you know as a as as a behavior of a muslim no so we'll look at one or two Mm. hadith of the prophet in answering this question the first hadith again is from the muslim of imam ahmed this hadith Mm. is sahih li ghayrihi yeah. Okay, sound hadith, but due to various narrations of it, not in and of itself, okay. Okay. where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "In al mu'mina yudriku bihusni khuliqihi darajati qaim al layli saim al nahar." Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Muhammad, which translates as, "Indeed, the believer mm-hmm. reaches uh, through his good character the ranks of the one worshiping during the night." And fasting during the day. So here we have in this beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu we have in it two different measures mm. that were used by the Sahaba and by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to measure outward piety at least right. um, being okay. brought together. So the Sahaba often went you, when you read many many hadith in which the Sahaba comment on somebody being pious or what have you, and this is common. They'll say that you know he used to worship a lot during the night. And he used to fast a lot during the day. Mm. Okay, so this is a regular you know, theme we find with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and you know, worshipping during the night, uh, fasting during the day, and you know, this is uh, piety, or at least outwardly this is piety. Yeah. Now, so the Prophet so spoke about that, and obviously that's a good thing to do, yeah. and that's a, no doubt an act of piety. But the Prophet from here spoke about the other one we spoke about earlier, that mm. good character is also a measure of piety, or even going further than piety a measure of one's iman one's faith right. as the first hadith recorded so the prophet sallallahu alaihi spoke about um that even if one doesn't really have a great deal of ritual worship doesn't mm. pray a lot and obviously here we're not speaking about the five daily prayers you know, they're a given they're a must right. but what's being spoken about here is extra supererogatory nafal worship mm. okay so even if one doesn't have a great deal of uh, nafal worship 
And again, with the fasting, not speaking about Ramadan, Ramadan is a given, it's a must. Mm. There's no two ways about it. Everybody fasts Ramadan, that's how it should be. But nafal fasting, uh, optional fasting. Mm. So even if one doesn't have a great deal of optional fast and a great deal of optional salah, a person can still reach the rank of those who do through his akhlaq, through his character. And as we're going to see in later hadith, not only that, can surpass them right. and a person who has a, a lot of ritual worship if you like mm-hmm. but doesn't really work very hard on bettering himself as a person or his character is a khlaq mm-hmm. a person who, who does this is going to end up probably with a lot less on the mm-hmm. day of judgment than one who possibly didn't have so much ritual worship but mm-hmm. worked hard and trying to treat people well and trying to, mm. you know, uh, to develop one's character and mm. trying to have the best of character. Mm. So one of the hadith that speak about that, uh, this hadith is from Tirmidhi. Imam Tirmidhi said the hadith is Hassan Sahih, mm. meaning it's a strong hadith, it's yes. a uh, Sahih hadith, where uh, he mentioned the Prophet Sallallahu so said, ما شيء أثقل في ميزان المؤمن يوم القيامة من خلق حسن now, where the Prophet ﷺ said there is nothing more weighty in the scales of the believer on the Day of Judgment than good character. And the apparent mm. of the hadith is what? Even weightier than mm. nafal salah. Yeah. Even weightier than nafal fasting. Even weightier than all of these great illuminating blessed forms of spiritual, uh, sorry, ritual worship. Mm. Uh, they're great in, in no way should one look down upon them yeah. but here the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is making it clear that that uh, the uh, good character surpasses yeah. it sallallahu alaihi wasallam yeah. the hadith continues wa inna allaha la yabghidu al-fahsha al which goes on to say and indeed allah dislikes the one who has vile and vulgar speech Mm. And this is the opposite, well, extreme opposite of good character. Of course, you yeah. see, where a person, well, even they may have some prayers or what have you, mm. but they don't treat people well. They don't address people in the right way. They're not courteous necessarily. Mm. Okay, this is person, you know, according to this blessed hadith of the Prophet sallallahu is not going to find closeness to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Mm. Um, so this is a, a very important hadith. Mm. Uh, the last one I wanted to quote. <laughs> Especially since we've been speaking so much about the Prophet Wasallam, And inshallah every single Muslim One of his uh, or her primary goals yeah. Is to be close to the Prophet Wasallam. And this is what we find with the Sahaba Again and again and again mm. No doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To have the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To have closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And also inevitably uh, mm-hmm. Closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Means closeness to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yes. uh, The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And he is not det- uh, distanced from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. Wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves mm-hmm. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure lies The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's pleasure lies mm-hmm. But we find this with the Sahaba on a number of occasions they used to say this to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Oh Messenger of Allah we want to be with you in the Akhirah mm. In one hadith a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looking Salaam. quite troubled The mm. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him yes. you know asked him what, uh, what the issue is yes. and uh, we have different Sahaba and different hadith for this in this particular one the Sahabi said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Oh Messenger of Allah I want to be with you in paradise. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, uh, that assist me in that by making lots of sujood, sajda, really? prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. We have various hadith, and you would have the hadith of Thu'ban. That's very specific ta'ala. though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is there a reason why that is specific? The the particularly prostration. Yeah, it may be peculiar to because this uh, sometimes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do that. And the advice would be peculiar to one particular Sahabi. Yeah. The Prophet oh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam may okay. realize that for this Sahabi, this is the best thing. You see, right. this is why when you read, uh, and it's important to read lots yes. of hadith. Yes. But when you read many hadith, especially the forty hadith of Imam Nawawi, there's only forty there, but yeah. uh, many of the hadith Imam Nawawi selected in his collection. Yeah. Um, there are where Sahaba asking the Prophet for advice 
mm-hmm. and what you'll see is often all of the time yeah. but often the advice seems to be specific to that person mm-hmm. the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advise him one thing and another sahabi mm-hmm. asked the same question something else oh, okay. like the uh, uh, sahabi asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh messenger of allah oh so you need to give me some advice the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said la taghdab don't get angry Maybe he was a person of that kind yeah, of disposition. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah. see, another person, the Prophet Sallallahu advised re- with regards to uh, worship. The Prophet Sallallahu yeah. Alaihi advised salah. A second mm-hmm. one, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised uh, yani sujood, uh, as is I mentioned here. Right. Another one, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised fasting. Mm-hmm. You see, so different people, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam advised uh, differently. But obviously, there, you know, there, there are there's a generally there there's a lesson for everybody, and yeah. they are gen- generally applicable. Yeah. You know, anything the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions, you know, it'd be wrong of us to say, well, that was for that Sahabi alone. Right. right Nobody right. else is really encouraged to make lots of such. That everybody's encouraged. Mm-hmm. You see, but this was the benefit they had of having the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Therefore them that not only do they get all of the general teaching of the Prophet yes. they go to the Prophet as individuals mm-hmm. and they get individual and very yeah. specific guidance yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, one thing that uh, that's amazing about what you just said um, going a bit further back uh, uh, earlier in what you were saying is that character is extremely weighty in its significance and its reward and ultimately is possibly even greater than yeah. than ritual worship no. in its significance to um uh to one success yes i mean the thing is is that what one has always seen um uh, i mean the common um misconception is that well you know i'll, I'll ritual worship outweighs one's um kind of character which is unfortunately some yeah unfortunately of the, that is a very common misconception yeah very common misconception uh, but but what you said is a, compl- a complete reverse complete reverse and you will find not one hadith that's amazing and really. even today we'll quote five or six hadith that's speaking about the reverse yeah. and not only that for anybody who studied the seerah you'll find that those people who were closest to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had an you know even more care and concern mm. uh, and connection with were yeah. those with really good character mm. and those with the best character of the allah ta'ala anha, oh. they used to uh, have greater closeness to the messenger of allah yeah. sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this life and as the hadith in tirmidhi says yeah. in the next life where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so, said so. um إِنَّ مِنْ أَحَبِّكُمْ إِلَيَّ وَأَقْرَبِكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَحَاسِنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا Where the Prophet ﷺ, the hadith in Tirmidhi, Hassan hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Indeed, the most beloved of you to me, and the closest of you to me on uh, uh, in seating on the Day of Judgment, are the best of you in character. And uh, this hadith is this part of the hadith is Sahih. This is mentioned in Tirmidhi and Ahmad and many others. Right. Uh, Tirmidhi, the Hassan hadith, he carries on. He mentions something else. This is only in Tirmidhi where he goes on and he says, "Wa inna abghadakum ilayya wa abghadakum minni majlisan yom al qiyamah." And then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi describes some characteristics. Where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "And indeed, the furthest away from me, and the most disliked by me." Are those who are uh, arrogant, mm. uh, people who have arrogance. Why? Because this is the complete opposite of the Prophet Sallallahu own mm. character. Mm. You see, and uh, if we want to be with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu which every mm. Muslim does, yeah. then we should try to emulate the yeah. Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his character. Because as this hadith is teaching us that closeness depends on trying to match, yeah. we won't absolutely match because no. we never reach perfection but trying to match the character the behavior mm-hmm. the manner mm-hmm. of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, the further away we are from that it yeah. may be we are further away from the messenger of allah mm-hmm. sallallahu alaihi wasallam which takes us on to what we were discussing earlier yeah. how to achieve it yeah how do, you, how do we bring <laughs> those qualities into our yeah. lives? You know, that's that, that's the other thing, isn't it? That's the other challenge. Yeah. You know, how do we kind of change that um, in ourselves um, despite what's happening around us and despite what, what's being represented to us and despite what um, people are doing to us? Yeah. And uh, I, I'm asked this question a lot. Uh-huh. And even sometimes I'm asked the question that, yeah. okay, define for us good character. Okay. Yeah. 
And uh, the best answer I have for this, yes. defined for us good character, is the character of the Prophet ﷺ. You see, and the, that's a short sure answer, but there's a, a great deal to it. And this takes mm. one to study something like the Seerah or the Shema'il, the so biography knowledge. of the Prophet ﷺ. So knowledge is important mm. because it's, you know, good character or perfection of one's character yeah. lies in trying to emulate the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. Mm. But the point is, um, when we speak about character, it's a vast subject. Yes. See, there's so yeah. many different aspects to one's character. Mm -hmm. And another thing w w we'll find when we study the character of the Prophet ﷺ or the life of the Prophet ﷺ, so, so. that it's balanced. Right. It's so balanced. And this is a point. Because mm -hmm. it's not too difficult to go to one side or the other. Mm. It's not even too difficult to, for example, be a really soft, gentle person. Yeah. You know, if you kind of work hard, if you're, if you're not like that by nature, but mm. you work hard on it, you know, really try to become a softer, kinder, more gentle kind of person, yeah. um, you can get there. But what's yeah. more difficult is to couple that with strength when it's required. Mm. You see, the Prophet was that's the that's kindest right. of people, yeah. was the gentlest of people, mm -hmm. but at the same time, he was the strongest of people and the most, mm. for, uh, most forthright of per people mm. when it was required. Mm. So as they said that the Prophet وسلم, when uh, somebody was violating the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made sacred, and the Prophet وسلم, there was nobody as strong as the Prophet وسلم, there, and none of it, they said none of us could speak to him. When he'd made up his mind something with regards to what's sacred from the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And the Prophet sallallahu when it came to the rights of other people. Yes, his own rights he would give up. At the, mm. You know, so easily he would just give it up. This person mistreated him, mm. misbehaved with him, abused him sallallahu alayhi wa would just give it up. But with other people, no. He would get yeah. angry for their sake, mm. you see, and that's the point. It's a complete reverse now, isn't exactly, it? and that's the point. That's part of the perfection of the Prophet oh, yeah. You see, because if you want to just go to one side of things, it's quite easy, mm. you see. Mm. But the balance is difficult, <laughs> you see. And Extremities most are easy to do, exactly, and yeah. that's unfortunately what we, yeah. you know, a lot of what what we have become today. Exactly, because some people, by their nature, they're kind of strong-minded if you like strong-willed mm -hmm. okay it's not so difficult to be strong and harsh if you like at times yeah, yeah. you see and kind of develop that kind of characteristic mm. okay and other people are softer by nature or more gentle or what have you it's not too difficult to just kind of go down that route mm. but the prophet and this right. is the beauty of the prophet and them managed both Mm. Had this aspect oh, and that aspect. When yes. that was required, he had the ability to do it. Yeah. Uh, but his general disposition was yeah. this, mm. and he done it with his companions. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Like uh, if we take two of them as examples, Sayyidina Abu Bakr and yeah. Sayyidina Umar. Yeah. Anybody who knows much about these two companions of the yeah. Prophet Sallallahu alaihi wasallam knows that uh, you know in their nature they seem to be opposites. Mm. Sayyidina Umar is quite a strong, firm character. Mm. Radiallahu taala anhu. Sayyidina Abu Bakr seems to be you know a, a lot gentler. Uh, mm. uh, Radiallahu taala anhu. Even Sayyidina Aisha, she mentioned when the Prophet Sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted Sayyidina Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. Sayyidina Aisha, she mentioned to the Prophet. Sayyidatanu Aisha She mentioned to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Oh Messenger of Allah But he's raqiq yani He's a soft person He's a <laughs> gentle person He'll lead the prayer And why was she uh, She had many reasons for saying it But yes. well, she was saying that He'll lead the prayer And you know He'll cry Because he, you know, that's his nature Radiallahu ta'ala anhu And this was part of his piety also mm -hmm. He'll hear the verses of Quran He'll recite the verses of Quran He'll cry a lot and such things Okay, But that was saying Abu Bakr Yes but being with the Prophet Sallallahu he managed to develop the other side. Right. Mm. Why? Well, how do we know this? <laughs> because when he became the Khalifa, yeah. ta'ala, mm. he was incredibly strong-willed. Mm. Certain decisions he made, amongst the first decisions he made when he became Khalifa, everybody was opposed to him. Mm. And he said, no, mm. I'm doing this. Mm. I've made my decision. It's the right thing to do, yeah. and I'm doing this. Political yeah. decisions yeah, or military course. decisions. Yeah. Okay, but he had that strength of character. Mm. Where did it come from? Mm. Learning that from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Umar, as I said, was quite the opposite. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but being with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he developed the other side. Yeah. And we've seen that so many times in in the in in the previous hadith a hadith that you mentioned yes. earlier in the program.
Precisely. Mm-hmm. So, yani, mashallah, this is he was perfect himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he perfected those around him. Mm-hmm. And inshallah, inshallah, by uh, following his sunnah, we can aspire to that perfection and attain mm-hmm. a portion of it. Inshallah, mm-hmm. ta'ala. Mm-hmm. No. Well, when you say that, you know, reading, because one one aspect of it was you said was gaining knowledge, um, and um, to. Um, uh, you know, to, <coughs> to to learn about the character of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Can you recommend uh, um, any kind of materials or read or books or um, or and in addition to that, um, uh, you know, what a company? You know, how does that? How how does um, should should one? be uh, aware of the company because one keeps because it's, it's often we say that oh well I'm not going to compromise my values you know I uh, or what I am I'm going to I'm going to um, be my own person and it doesn't matter you know they can my company or my friends can be you know what they want but the thing is is that in reality um, it ca- can one really develop character you know if um, if one is um doesn't necessarily uh, keep with good character or good yeah, good company themselves. Important. I mean, it, how how does that? Yeah, how this w- is a, a second thing with regards mm. to. I mean, primary, most importantly, to study the yeah. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's character and life generally Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is most important and to identify it because. Yeah. In the, uh, the other aspect, as you mentioned, is yeah. to be around people who have good character mm. or people who are strong where you are weak. Mm. You see, so somebody might, you know, be quite strong willed and has that which can be used for positive, mm. but it's not so sensitive or mm. caring. You see, so possibly he needs somebody who's stronger there to spend some yeah. time with such a person to possibly mm. develop that aspect yeah. of it. But that will never take the place of uh, or never suffice we'll always need the example of the Prophet right, of there because we're not going to find anybody else no. that has perfection mm-hmm. you see mm. so other people we may benefit from them and it's important yeah. means of it and the Prophet mm. Wasallam encouraged us to keep good company but uh, that's always going to be primary mm. and whenever we find a contradiction between what we s- read and studied and yeah. understood mm. and have been taught correctly regarding the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam whenever we see a contradiction between that and mm. what even say a scholar is doing or yeah. a part is so called you know a pious person or somebody who's known for their piety mm. when we see a contradiction there we need to be able to return to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we will see contradictions yeah it's inevitable. Mm. Nobody is perfect. Of course. We're going to see. And this is why, as the ulama say, they say the action of a scholar is not evidence. You see, lots of oh. people will say this, that mm. oh, such and such a thing must be fine or must be good or mm. must be acceptable or mm. must be rewarding because Sheikh such and such does it. Or Mufti such and such does it. Mm. Okay? And as they said, the action of a scholar yes. is not Evidence. Mm. The action of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is evidence, evidence. and uh, a, a form of evidence is the actions of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, uh, so we always need that. Yeah, you see, always to return back to whenever we see any kind of as a reference mm. to clarify for us contradictions. Mm. You see, that we understood something one way. It seems. Peop- uh, you know, some people are practicing it a slightly different way. Mm. Well, let's go back to the Prophet Sallallahu example. Mm. You see, mm. this is the Subhanallah, the 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 great blessing on this Ummah. Yeah. Mm. Not only do we uh, have this noble Prophet as our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but Salam. also we have lots and lots and lots of information regarding him. Yes. So yes. much information mm. regarding our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you, you get uh, books of uh, Sirah, biography mm. of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, voluminous, mm. large, thirty volume books yeah. on the uh, life of the Prophet. You mentioned a few Salah. of them for our listeners. In English, oh, English ones, I don't yeah. think we have thirty volume in English. In no, Arabic, Arabic, we have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, in English, volume. what English ones could English you recommend? English one, that, that are good. Sirah. I say even though I haven't read it I've read mm. it in Arabic uh, I haven't read it in English so mm. I don't know how good the translation is 
But I know Ibn Kathir's seerah has been translated, right. okay. which in Arabic is brilliant. Really? It's quite large, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, in English, I think it's about four volumes. It's right. quite large. Mm. And it doesn't read as a story. Uh, well, okay. it does. It is chronological, oh, okay. but it's more yeah. of a focus on evidences and such things. Okay. Um, if a person would r like more of a narrative, um, a, a, an easier read, if you like, mm. I would recommend Martin Ling's Sira, okay. um, but uh, that's it's a beautiful read. It's really, really well written, accessible uh, and easy to. Read. Yes, yeah. uh, mm. although he does like to use Old English, which personally, yes. personally, I like. Yeah, uh, I've noticed he uses Roman numerals in. Yeah, his, he uses. Uh, yeah, yeah, with which the is chapters. unusual with the chapter numbers, yeah, which is unusual. I, I don't know <laughs> why. Maybe he was trying to give it a. An older field, I don't yeah, know, yeah. but he, uh, the English he uses, I mean, mm. uh, I like it, I enjoy it. Mm. Um, but with my endings, obviously, that does come with a warning. There are a few mistakes in it. Some are quite serious. Mm. But this is why I would always advise that any Islamic science, it mm. should be taken from a teacher. There's always yes. the best way to do it, mm. always to study it with a teacher. So even mm. if a person is going to read Sira alone, mm. they should couple that with studying with somebody mm. there's never a um there, there's never a situation where it's just going to suffice you without a teacher mm. and this has been mm. our tradition from the time of the prophet them. Yes. the oh. sahaba had their teacher <laughs> then the generation after them the tabi'in they had their teachers from the sahaba this has yeah. always been our way mm. to take from uh, qualified teachers inshallah mm. another one i should mention is al uh, al makhtum which usually is translated as the sealed nectar. Mm. It's far more accurate than okay. Martin Ling's. Mm. I would say as a read, it's probably not as enjoyable. Mm. And, you know, the kind of mood or atmosphere it creates is not quite the same. Right. But it's still uh, beneficial and far more accurate mm. Uh, mm. than Martin Ling's. Because yeah. um, uh, the author seems to have focused on that mm. a lot more. And, uh, references most of what he's got in the book, so mm. that's also a good read. Yeah. But uh, I would say, and you know, I come back to saying that yeah. a teacher is important. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, may Allah give us all the tawfiq to practice upon uh, what you've what, what you've uh, taught us today, and uh, what you've said about the beautiful character of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and um, and give us the tawfiq and the ability to learn about it, to adopt his character. And to and to and to practice it as well, and to and to be in good company. So with that, um, Sheikh Jazakallah Khair, and we've come to the end of our time together for this week.